A year ago at the showdown in O-Town, Haggerty shocked the basketball world by knocking off nationally ranked Montverde Academy. The Huskies are back, ready to sink their teeth into another juggernaut opponent, Lake Highland. The Highlanders are loaded with talent, with one of the nation's top juniors, Joel Berry, running the show. It's Lake Highland and Haggerty, next on Bright House Sports Network. Bright House Sports Network welcomes you back to the second annual showdown in O-Town, and boy, should this one be a great game. It's third-ranked Haggerty against sixth-ranked Lake Highland in the Subway Restaurant Game of the Week. Good evening, everyone. Austin Lyon alongside former UCF point guard Mike O'Donnell. So glad you've joined us to watch two teams that were the state runner-up in their respective classification last year. These two teams are both having terrific starts this season, and they've already played once this year. Haggerty beating Lake Highland 98-92 in an overtime thriller. Well, it's the oldest cliche in basketball. It's always hard to beat a team twice in one season, but execution and free throws late in the game will determine the winner tonight. Haggerty graduated three starters off last year's 8A state runner-up team. The two top players this year are both returning starters, and that begins with Logan Hovey. Well, Logan Hovey is a tough physical inside presence. He does not shy away from contact. He's a great rebounder, and he always seems to be around the ball with decent athletic ability. And complimenting Hovey is a versatile forward, Luke Doyle. Love Luke Doyle. Plays with a very high basketball IQ. He's not overly athletic, but he's got a great feel for the game, great passer, and dangerous from three. Those two will have a matchup problem with Lake Highland Prep's Joel Berry. The junior is arguably the nation's best point guard. There's nothing that this kid can't do. I mean, he is one of the best guards in the state and the nation. He's got a great mix between an old school and new school game, always going north and south, and unbelievable body control for a point guard. And in the post, the Highlanders have a guy who fills up the stat sheet in Denzel Davis. Well, Denzel Davis is a Rice commit. He's a great student, plays, has had multiple mid to low major offers, brings a lot of energy, a lot of intensity for Lake Highland, and an underrated passer. When these two teams met back Earlier this year, Lake Highland did not have Joel Berry. The outstanding junior point guard will be on the court today as the Highlanders look to avenge that 98-92 loss. We'll have starting lineups and opening tip here from OCP when we come back on Bright House Sports Network. The Bright House Sports Network Game of the Week is presented by Subway Restaurants. Try the new Sriracha Chicken Melt at Subway Restaurants. If you're looking for something spicy, we've got you covered. For a limited time only, Subway. Eat fresh. Number three, Haggerty, and number six, Lake Highland, ready to go here at Orlando Christian Prep. Here's a look at the starting lineups for both teams. We highlighted Barry in the open. He's joined by Henderson Simpson, Nick Dean, and the 6'8 forward, Denzel Davis. For Haggerty, Doyle and Hovey are both outstanding on the perimeter. And Castaneda, Brizendine, and Dylan Nagel, the other starters for the Huskies. Haggerty knocked off Mount Bird in the showdown in O-Town last year, looking to take down another strong foe tonight in Lake Highland. And the Highlanders control the opening tip and B.J. Simpson with possession for LHP. Two physical, two well-conditioned teams playing tonight. We are in for one good game. And a turnover on the opening possession as the entry pass was knocked out of bounds. Castaneda working against Simpson. That's an interesting matchup. Castaneda at 6-3. Simpson just about six feet. A double team on the baseline and a foul call. You'll see Lake Highland play very physical on-ball defense all night, similar to what we saw OCP play in the previous game. Just underway here on Bright House Sports Network. Doyle fakes a three and drives it inside. Shoveled it to Castaneda, and it's off the hands of Barry. You're going to see some flare screen and down screen action a lot from Haggerty in the half court. Hubby in the corner. Doyle with a fadeaway on the baseline. It's no good. And a good rebound by Nick Dean. Barry operating against Brizendine. And there's Jay Henderson. 
That's what Henderson likes to do, get in the paint, make something happen. I mean, he's going to take those tough floater shots, but they usually go in for him. Tough assignment for Brizendine. He's checked by Barry. Very good on-ball defender. Doesn't get a whole lot of credit for his defense. There's Hovey underneath with the first basket of the game. Great find. He moves so well without the ball. Henderson to answer for three. That's what makes him so good. He can step out behind a three-point line, catch and shoot like that, and then get into the paint as well. Missed three on the perimeter by Castaneda and the rebound to Denzel Davis. Simpson passed Doyle into the paint. Good defensive play as Doyle knocked it away from behind. Both these teams so efficient on the offensive end, especially in semi-transition. They're always looking to make a play for a teammate. Perimeter shot is short. Davis creating another opportunity. Stripped by Nagel. And Nagel controls the defensive rebound. His pass, lazy outlet pass, is stolen by Barry and a foul on Brizendine. So a slow start for both of these teams. It was 98-92 when they met in November. Every player on the floor for each team has the ability and has the freedom to make a play towards a basket. That's why both these teams put up so many points, because every player on the floor can score, not just a role player. Dean had it altered by Nagel. And here comes Logan Hovey. Brizendine for three. That is an air ball. He has not made a three-pointer all year. It's a great extra pass. If you're open, you got to take it. Barry all the way to the rack. Scored and a foul. Tough. That's why he's so good. Does not shy away from contact. Goes straight at the rim. Takes the body contact and finishes right here. Most players would try to reverse this. Nope. Not Barry. Right to the rim. Tough old school basketball right there. Barry averaging 28.1 points per game and shooting 52% from the floor. He missed four weeks with surgery to repair a torn meniscus. Out eight games, Lake Highland went three and five in those games. They are eight and oh when he plays this year. Hubby's reverse doesn't go. And Doyle ends up with the loose ball and a foul on Nick Dean. I like Doyle's game, he's not He's not overly flashy. He's just always around the basketball, looking to make the simple play. Take what the defense gives it, go straight at the rim and get the foul. Excellent free throw shooter. Doyle, a guy who creates mismatches because of his size and his ability to handle the ball at 6'5". Only one of two there, so 6-3 as Simpson beats everybody down the floor. Lost it on the way up. Dean a second try, no. Barry double clutches and a foul against Haggerty. Oh, well, you're not going to see Barry double clutch a whole lot there in the post, but he's the type of player that just looks to make plays when it's available to him. Barry 87% at the free throw line as he misses the first of two. There's Jeff Turner, head coach at Lake Highland, now in his eighth season. What's the most impressive about Barry's stat line, and he's getting 28 points a game, which is just incredible, but he's a great rebounding guard, gets 8.4 rebounds a game. Hovey. Beats Denzel Davis to the rim. Great drive by Logan Hubby. Well, great action by Haggerty. They do an outstanding job of spreading the defense, driving kick, driving kick. Denzel Davis the rebound and the stick back. You can see the pace quickening up for both teams right now as we get a better flow to the game. Hubby got free for Nick Dean. Misfired on a three. But the rebound right to Brizendine. Nagel has it taken away by Barry. And out of bounds, they say off the hip of Barry, and it will stay with Haggerty. You can see those 
that knee brace on the left knee of Barry, and he's got Patrick Ewing knee pads on both knee pad on both knees there. Haggerty trailing 9-5 with Doyle handling up top against Henderson. Doyle slicing through the defense and a foul. It's a good flare screen. Had the opportunity for an okay three-point shot, turned it down for a better opportunity towards the rim. You see the flare screen there? Takes it straight at the rim. Players nowadays want to get flashy and fancy when they get around the when they get around the bucket and avoid contact, but college coaches salivate over the, the chance to get a player who does not shy away from getting hit and get to the free throw line. Early subs for Lake Highland. Mark Upstein and Evan Jager on the floor. Jager's the quarterback for Lake Highland's football team. Was not in the first 10 in Jeff Turner's rotation, but he is the second sub off the bench here midway through the first quarter. Turner likes to play 10 guys in the first half, says that keeps everyone involved in the game. Barry's pull-up jumper is long, and here comes Castaneda. Good pass. Nagel with the extra pass to Castaneda, counted and a foul. Great body control as he was hit by Nick Dean on the way up. You almost liken this Haggerty team to the way Butler plays basketball. I said they're going to spread you, they're going to drive until the defense commits, and they're going to kick, and then they're going to drive again, and then they're going to kick. They all can shoot threes, but their main goal is to get in the paint and get to the free throw line. That's the second foul against Nick Dean. He goes to the bench and Denzel Davis back in. And for the first time for Haggerty, we see Daniel Lowe, the 6'8 senior. Castaneda converts the three-point play and Haggerty has the lead at 10-9. Very so dangerous off that ball screen. Denzel Davis showing his range with that three. It's off the back rim. He keeps the play alive and a great hustle by Davis to create another possession. Well, you never want to dribble a loose ball. Number one rule when there's a loose ball on the court, pick it up and chin it. Very patiently working against Brizendine. Jaron Lewis on the floor for Lake Highland. Lewis crosses over against Doyle, nearly traveled. Now Barry elevates from 17. And off the hands of Jager, out of bounds to the Huskies. Pretty good defensive effort by Haggerty. They gave up an offensive rebound. It's tough to, it's tough to re-guard an entire possession when you give up an offensive rebound the first time. Just more than five minutes in here between Haggerty and Lake Highland. Castaneda can't hit the three. Nagel skies for the offensive rebound. Pushes over Lewis, but there's no foul. And here come the Highlanders. Barry past Brizendine, setting up Lewis for three. Second opportunity, no. How about Evan Jager with a third try? No Three shots on that possession for Lake Highland, and Jager is the one who puts it in. No box outs for Haggerty. No one turned and found a body by the Huskies to get a, to get a rebound, and Lake Highland took advantage of it. Castaneda again underneath. That time, no foul call against Epstein. And the push ahead from Jager to Joel Berry. He lays it in and a chance for three. Yeah, here's the thing if you're Carden Berry in transition. If he's going to attack the rim and he's got that look in his eyes, you can't just swipe at the ball because chances are he's too strong, he's too athletic to finish over the top or through you and get an and one. If you're going to foul him, you got to make sure the ball does not go anywhere near the rim. Already six for Joel Berry. Can't make it seven as he misfires on the free throw. Four in a row for Lake Highland. 
Islanders lead by three as Brizendine shoots a long two. That was off balance with no one underneath. And Barry racing the other way. Another foul against Luke Doyle and Barry with back-to-back -back and ones for Lake Highland. Yeah, you, just, you just can't go soft against Joel Barry. He's too strong. He's too determined to get a bucket. Finishes with the left hand. <laughs> great, great athleticism. Well, Haggerty got a break. That should be the second foul on Doyle. The officials gave a foul to Henry Torres, who has not come on the floor yet for the Huskies. At the other oh, end, wow! an alley-oop from Brizendine to Doyle, perfectly executed. Doyle says, don't wear jean shorts around me. And a travel against Lewis. Another look at the perfectly executed alley-oop. You cannot throw a better pass than that. Absolutely perfect location. There's Josh Cohn, head coach at Haggerty, in his eighth year, started the program, and most of the time he looks like a man without a care in the world as he watches the game. Rarely gets up from the bench and rarely expresses any concern. Hubby passes up a three. Brizendine from 15 off the back rim. I think you see Haggerty a lot of times reflect his personality as a coach is they never seem too rushed. They always seem under control, always looking to make plays for other people. Denzel Davis, another three, and that one is good. And if Lake Highland can have Denzel Davis at 6'8", stepping out to play on the perimeter, they become that much more dangerous offensively. Hovey cannot answer at the other end. And when Davis is making outside shots, and then he goes into the post, He's pretty much unguardable. You have to pick your poison playing against him. Lake Highland content to hold for the final shot of the quarter as Simpson operates off a screen from Jager. Davis, how about another three? Ring it up. The first quarter comes to an end with Denzel Davis hitting back-to-back -back threes. He pushes a three-point lead to nine. Lake Highland with a 21-12 lead on Haggerty. Joel Berry with a couple of and ones, Denzel Davis a couple threes, and it's the Highlanders by nine. Back here at Orlando Christian Prep, the middle of a triple header for us here tonight on Bright House Sports Network and Lake Highland. Number six in our BHSN poll with a 21-12 first quarter lead thanks to Joel Berry and Denzel Davis. Well, Barry's done an outstanding job in transition. He's got two and ones, playing very physical on both ends of the floor. Great, great effort by Lake Highland there in the first quarter. Henry Torres off the bench for Haggerty to open the second quarter. Castaneda doubled on the baseline. Excellent defensive pressure by Lake Highland here in this possession. Malcolm Laws off the bench. First action he's seen. He's one of their better defensive players off the bench. And a deflection. Huskies will inbound on the baseline. One of my favorite stats to chart effort is deflections. And a team like Lake Highland averages over 20 deflections a game. You may not get a steal, but it just shows how aggressive you're being on the defensive end. Hovey being checked by Simpson, and that's out of bounds. And we've got a foul. Official Geno Smith coming over from the near sideline calls an offensive foul. That's going against Logan Hovey. It's his first. Yep, that's a good call. Watch Hovey just a little out of control.